today's topic, exposure index. Now, the exposure index on a digital image is the exposure that the image receptor actually received. Now, this doesn't have anything to do with the exposure to the patient. Your patient's entrance skin dose is always going to be much higher than what the um, exposure, what the uh, imaging plate saw. Because, remember, the imaging plate only gets about 1% of the energy that hits the patient. Um, the rest of that gets either scattered or absorbed in the patient. And so all we see is just a fraction of the total exposure. And there's a lot of things that can influence your exposure index. And among these are positioning. You know, if your positioning is off a little bit, then that can throw off your exposure index. Technical factors, the harder you hit the patient, the higher your exposure index is going to be because the more energy got through the patient and hit the imaging plate. Uh, patient composition, remember, um, more matter, more scatter. Thick patient is going to absorb more of your radiation. And then if your patient has a bunch of prosthesis on board, metal, plastic, you know, whatever they've got, if it's absorbing x-ray, then this, it's going to have an effect on your exposure index. Remember, the, the computer doesn't know, typically, what kind of technical factors you had selected unless you've got one of those systems that's tied to your generator. Um, what it knows is how much energy actually hit the plate. And it is totally possible, in fact likely, for two consecutive images of the same patient to have different EI values due to the fact that your patient is a living, breathing person. They move around a little bit, you know, maybe even while you're not looking. And there can always be fluctuations of the generator, as you probably are well aware. Okay, now, target index. Every company that sells a piece of equipment, x-ray equipment, they have a target index that they have pre-programmed in for you. Now, the idea is that whenever you get a new piece of equipment, you're supposed to change your target indices to match the techniques that you're using in your department. Um, so, basically, um, it's up to each individual department to set their own target indices. Now, if you call tech support for any uh, image receptor system, you know, doesn't matter. Canon, Siemens, Fuji, whatever. They're going to tell you the same thing. You're supposed to be setting your own target indices. Okay, great. Um, so what can possibly go wrong? Um, deviation index. The deviation index is something that's calculated by the computer. And so what the computer does is it takes the actual exposure to the image receptor and it compares that with the target value that is pre-programmed in for that particular histogram. So chest, knee, ankle, whatever. You know, it's going to have its own target index, supposedly. And mathematically, the way this thing is worked out, the deviation index is the log base 10 of the exposure index over the target index. So if the EI over TI is equal to 2, so that would be where your exposure index was double your target index. Well, then the log of 2 is going to be 0 0.3, because as you remember from our previous discussion, 10 to the 0.3 is 2, so that's where that logarithmic value comes from. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that log, and then we're going to multiply it by 10 so that we get a whole number. So if exposure index was double the target index, then the log of 2 is going to be 0 0.3. 0 0.3 times 10 is just plain 3. So you're going to get a deviation index of 3. So that's how you know, oh, well, I used 2 times too much technique. All right, so if your EI and TI are the same, so suppose you've got a target index of 400 and you've got an exposure index of like 399, well, that's going to be approximately 1, and the log of 1 is 0, and 0 times 10 is still 0. So you're going to have a deviation index of 0, perfect exposure. All right, now, here's a problem. One of our clinical affiliates brought a brand new DR system, and all the target indices were set at the factory to 800. Okay, so for example, if you're doing a chest x-ray at the Bucky, 72 inch SID, 110 kVp at 4.3 mass, gives us an exposure index of about 350. 
which as we've discovered in our laboratory, uh, for chest radiography, you want your exposure index to be between like 350 and 450, somewhere in there. You know, that works really well. But with their system, the computer is expecting an 800, and so it gives you a DI of negative 3.5 in this case, and it paints it red, so it makes it look like you're severely underexposed. Now, is the image truly underexposed? Well, anybody that's been in the x-ray business for any length of time knows that at a 72-inch SID with a normal-sized patient, 110 kVp, 4.3 mass, that should give you a pretty good chest x-ray. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that technique unless your patient has, like, really thick muscles or a lot of adipose tissue. Now, so given this situation, is my image truly underexposed? Well, the answer is no the target index is off. Um, that's the main problem. So can you trust the DI? Yes, you absolutely can, but only if the target exposure numbers are correct. Now, this hinges on your facility having a QC initiative in place. Somebody is supposed to be going in there and looking at the exposure indices and then adjusting the target indices to match what you've been doing. Therefore, like uh, in the previous example, if my target index had been set to 375 or even 400, it wouldn't have given me such a wide deviation. It would have given me a much more accurate picture of where my exposure lies. So, and not trying to step on anybody's toes here, but keep in mind, since every site is supposed to be setting their own targets, it's not the manufacturer's fault. If we don't know what we're doing, and we can't figure out how to adjust our target index. Now, here's a question. How many of your vendors explained all this to you when they installed the system, or did they just cash your check and book up the road to the next customer? I'm guessing probably the latter. Okay, so here's some DI values you can use. And we're going to go ahead and, and kind of wrap this up. Um, Okay, so deviation index, if you've got a negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, that's a good exposure. That's going to be a deviation of around, uh, you know, it's, that means your exposure index and your target index are, are right where they're supposed to be. You've got a good exposure. If you've got a 2, then if your deviation index is a 2, then that means you are about 60% overexposed. A deviation of index of 3 means you had twice too much exposure. In other words, you were 100% over your target. And deviation index of 4 um, is going to give you, um, that means you're about 160% overexposed. And you can quickly figure this out by just breaking out a calculator and saying 10 to the point 0.2, 10 to the point 0.3, 10 to the point 0.4, and seeing what those numbers look like. Now, on the other hand, if you have a negative deviation index, okay, that means that what you're looking at here is 1 over 10 to that power. So this is, this is the log relative, but it's the reciprocal of it, if that makes any sense. So if you have a negative 1 for a deviation index, that means you're down by 20%. Negative 2 equates to approximately 40% underexposed. And remember, um, 10 to the point 3 is 2. Okay, so 1 over 2 is 1 half, and that's going to give you this negative 50%. So you're, you've got half the exposure you should have. And then negative 4, that means you're way underexposed. You probably have quantum model at this point. So of course you're going to have to go back and reshoot. So that's kind of how these deviation indices work. Remember, they're all based on log base 10. So if you take your deviation index and um, divide that by 10 and then raise it to raise 10 to that power, I know this is probably kind of confusing. I should probably write this down in a different format. Um, but that's going to help you figure out how that deviation index works. Here's an example. 
This was an image that we made in the laboratory. Now, we didn't do this deliberately. This was due to a series of unfortunate events. And so we made an exposure here with an EI of 5686 and a deviation index of 8.6. As you can see, we had severe pixel burnout. Okay, so you're probably wondering, well, exactly how much overexposed was this thing? Well, we can quickly find out with a little bit of mathematics. Welcome to my math class. Okay, so as we were saying, the exposure index, over the target index is going to be equal to, I'm sorry, we're going to take the log of that, multiply it by 10, and that's going to give us our deviation index, right? Okay, so in this case, our deviation index was 8.6. So if we take our 8.6 and divide that by 10, that's going to give us 0 0.86. Okay, now then, let's reach for a calculator. All right, had to turn the lights on so that I could power my solar-powered calculator. Okay, so we had 0.86. 10 to the 0.86, because remember, we're dealing with logarithms here and powers of 10. So 10 to the 0.86 happens to be equal to 7.24, so about 7 and a quarter. So if we're looking at this exposure here with a deviation of 8.6, that thing received about over 7 times too much energy. Okay, so don't do that. Uh, don't make our mistake. Now here's something interesting I want to show you. If I can get this to go here. And here was the next image. Okay, now this was after we, um, after we processed. Now remember, this is a DR plate. Okay, so we took our image and then subsequently we still had this ghost image on the DR plate. So remember, your DR plates can tolerate some overexposure but they don't have an unlimited tolerance for overexposure. It is absolutely possible to burn in an image to a DR plate so that you cannot erase it. Now, happy ending here. Um, our DR plate came back to normal after we let it sit for a couple of days, and then we um, went back and um, put a new battery in it and re-ran it, and all of a sudden, um, it was nice and clear again. Thank goodness. Okay, so we made a mistake. We burned our plate, but we got away with it. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. I appreciate it as always. And be sure to tune in again for the next exciting episode of X-Ray Education with your host, X-Ray Ed. All right, y'all. Happy radiography and have a great day.